The water, Rawak Kadash. The water, Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kased. All praises to Anoki Said. All praises to the great I Am loving kindness. Bahashem Yeshaya. Bahashem Matzah the Lamb. In the name of the Messiah, in the name of Christ. Shalom, family. This is little son Sabal Nabaya. If you are in mixed company right now, if you're sitting with someone else while you listen to this, then I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to ask the question, why were you created? And if you're sitting by yourself right now, then I want you to grab your pen and grab your paper, and I want you to write down this question. Why was I created? What 
is my purpose. What is the purpose that the Most High, our power, has for me? Why did he take the time to create me? By the end of this lesson, you are going to understand what a created purpose is. You're going to understand how to find your created purpose. And you are going to understand how to protect your personal vision, how to protect your vision of created purpose. As always, we are going to start in Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. That's Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So we understand that when we read our scriptures, we read precept upon precept. We understand that the scriptures are manifold. We get our understanding by linking the precepts together. We don't read it like a Harlequin novel. Now go to Psalm 119 and go to verse 104. That's Psalm 119 verse 104. It says, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Now drop down to verse 128. That's Psalm 119, verse 128. It says, Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. And as we have discussed before, just like there are the most high precepts, well, the adversary has some precepts out there too. So, What's it say? It says, I esteem all thy precepts, not the precepts of Nebo, but all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. All right. So we make sure that we're on the right path. All right. Now let's go to Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter one. And let's read verse 26, Genesis chapter one. Verse 26. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we understand that where it says, and God said, we understand that the Hebrew word right there is Elohim. And we understand that that word means God's or powers, plural. So we know it's not talking about just one God right there, but we know that it's speaking of the Godhead. We know it's speaking of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Notice it says... And God said, let us make man in our image. Go ahead and write down another question. Write this question down and say, what is the image of God? Now stay in the book of Genesis. And let's turn to Genesis chapter 9. That's Genesis chapter 9. And let's read verse 6. Genesis chapter 9, and let's read verse 6. It says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. So the scripture says, If you kill a man, then your blood is going to be shed. And then it says, for in the image of God made he man. That is what shedding blood means. It means murder. 
it means to kill a man. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And let's read verses 21 and 22. That's Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 and 22. It says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So the Messiah is saying that if you put your mouth on someone, then you might as well have put a blade on them or put a rock on them or put your hands on them because you're still in danger of the judgment. But why did the Messiah say this? What did he understand? What understanding did he have about this situation? Let's go to James chapter 3. Let's go to James chapter 3, and let's read verses 3 through 9. That's James chapter 3, verses 3 through 9. All right. Trying to give y'all a little bit of time to get there. All right. All right. Now, James chapter 3, verses 3 through 9. It says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold! How great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. You see where it says made after the similitude of God? Similitude means likeness of God. It means made after the image of God. You see, we read in Genesis chapter 9, where it says that whoso sheddeth a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Understand that it isn't speaking of you're going to be, your blood is going to be shed because you killed a man who looks like God. Stop thinking carnally. This isn't about the physical appearance. You see, our Messiah understood that we were not created to murder. We were not created to shed blood. That thing is not done in the likeness of the Father, in the image of the Father, in the similitude of the Father. So if you're doing this thing, then you are doing it in the similitude of the adversary. You understand? Even though you were created in the image of the Father, now you have recreated yourself in the image 
of the devil. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And let's read the very last verse. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. It says, Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. You see that? He made us upright. But y'all don't stay upright. Y'all out here looking for something new. Looking for the new this, the new that, the new way. But the scripture says, seek the old paths. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. And let's just read verses 22 through 25. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 25. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversion, Salakia, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, Putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Y'all see that? It says, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we understand now that the father created us in Elda. He created us upright true and holy in the beginning. Then we get down here and we cut up. We cut up, but these passages right here that we just read are letting you know. Repent. Repent so you can then walk in the way you were created. Now, let's go into the book of remembrance. Let's go into the book of remembrance, the first and second books of the Chi. And let's go to first a Chi, chapter two, and let's read verse 78. First a Chi, chapter two, and we're going to read verse 78. It says, And Enoch declared before God that even as Adam was the object of of the creation of Eve by the great compassion of the Lord God for him in his loneliness, even so would all mankind be the object of creation of all the host of heaven by the compassion of the word of his power for mankind in their loneliness to find their father and the vision of his created purpose for them. So you see that. So you see that the father, when we were created, we were created with a vision of created purpose. The father has a purpose for us. So we just read about how he created us to be upright and to be holy, to be in his image, or I should say to be in his vision, in his vision of of created purposes for us. You understand? We were made in his image. We were made in the image that he had for us. We were made with that image. It's not about having two legs and two arms. Monkeys are made in that image. Orangutans are made in that image. Are you saying that he created us to be in the image of monkeys? No, of course not. This ain't got nothing to do with that. This ain't got nothing to do with having two legs, two arms, and round ears. This is about what's on the inside. We were created with a vision, a vision of created purpose. Now, stay in 1st Chi chapter 2. And this time, let's read verses 83 through 88. 
1st of Chi chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 83 through 88. It says, Now Enoch also used the marriage of Adam and Eve that was made by God in the garden before there was sin as the element of righteousness to define the essence of holiness in manhood and womanhood. And Simihaza, that's the devil, and Simihaza trembled and quaked, and all the Dekadarshi, the fallen watchers, were powerless before the face of Enoch. And Simihaza decreed in the filthiness of his being that from then on it would be their intention to cause all sin to first attack the purity and serenity of marriage. You see that? You see how the devil attacks the purity and serenity of marriage? He don't want y'all to succeed. Let's keep going. Verse 85. And to this day, it is so. For if a person lies, is a slackard, or is impatient, or becomes violent, or unkind, or dishonorable and evil, its first effect is to diminish from the holiness of marriage. So all these things you and your spouse can be all fighting about because the devil then found a way in and he's trying to disrupt that. He wants to destroy that unity. Verse 86, let's keep reading. And at the same time, all who have allowed fornication or lust or adultery or immodesty to enter into their lives are in danger of being cut off from the feeling and knowing their vision, which is held by all the Urkadeshi. That's the holy angels. So you see that it says at the same time, all who have allowed fornication or lust or adultery or immodesty to enter into their lives are in constant Danger. They live in dangerously of being cut off from the feeling and knowing their vision. You understand that? Let's go keep going. Verse 87. But the word of his power can prevail with repentance. And a pure and holy marriage can act to stay the effects of past sin, to ensure a joining with element and a fulfillment of the vision of created purpose of a person in spite of sin. And all this because of the word of his power. Go back and check out my video that I did about my testimony. And you'll see, you'll see how my life didn't start getting on track until I made the decision to marry my wife. It's amazing what marriage does. Anyway, verse 88, it says, Therefore, there is no greater danger in these days of lust and vengeance to the soul of man than sexual impropriety, and yet no greater protection and surety for fulfilling visions than holiness in marriage. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? You see how important marriage is? All right. Now let's keep it moving. Now let's go to Second Achi in the Book of Remembrance. Second Achi, Chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 42 through 47. Second Achi, Chapter 4, verses 42 through 47. It says, And it came to pass that all those in heaven who heard these sayings of Messiah knew for surety that they were true, for they all could behold for themselves the nail prints in his hands and feet. And they all bore record of his willingness to go below all things and in this way be fully obedient unto his father. And Messiah went on to say, This, O Holy Father, is how this may be accomplished. 
when I die being full of the life that comes from the obedience of walking in perfection of way, I will rise again unto life. And in this way, I will overcome death and the separation of the spirits of men from their bodies. And I will reunite all the souls of men to their natural bodies to bring them to stand before you to be judged for their works of righteousness and repentance, whether they have done them or not, and for all that they have chosen in their choosing. And this is the manner in which element can find form in Elda. First, I will give you a reason to create each and every soul of men, and that reason will be their vision of created purpose. And in this way, I shall give each soul to you as a perfect gift to lighten your heart and to comfort you in the way and to be your companion. Therefore, let us give element which is here in Elda form in the natural world in such a way that the vision of created purpose of each and every one who you create will be the very specific definition of all creation and for all of the forms that element will take in their behalf. And in this way, you shall create the being of all existence entirely for the soul of each one. And in this way, their vision of created purpose will become the definition of all the forms element will take and the soul of each one you create here in Elda will be thus built into the fabric of all the element that has found form in their behalf. And this is not all, for it shall come to pass that all of the love and joys and happiness that you feel in your delightful anticipation of receiving them as gifts into your bosom will also become the very specific definition of all the forms that element here in Elda takes in your behalf. And thus, these two definitions shall dwell together in element and be built into the fabric of all creation side by side and joined. And for this reason, you in this manner, you will be able to abide with your children in the element of their world. For in this way, I shall bring Elda to them to abide also with them. So, in other words, our dear Messiah created each and every soul. And in creating each and every soul, he gave the Father a reason to create us. Because he said, this person will do this for you. This person can do this for you, can have this ability to do this for you or that for you. And in doing that, it brought great happiness to our creator, to the most high, our power to create us. And all of creation, all of creation serves each and every person like they are the only person that exists. Understand that creation is all around us and they are rooting for us. They want us to succeed. Creation wants us to walk in our visions of created purpose. Do you see how much went into us being created? It was never about some random sperm amongst a whole bunch of other sperms that may or may not make it to the egg. And if this sperm didn't make it to the egg, then you would have never been born. That's a lie from the pit of hell because we were created in Elda. It didn't matter which sperm made it to the egg. Do you understand? Let's go to the book of Jeremiah and let's read in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. That's Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto all 
Sarkia, unto the nations. You see that? I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see that? Before I formed thee in the belly. He's letting you know. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee in elder. Because I created thee in elder. That's how much goes into you being created. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah. And let's go to Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49, and let's read verse 1. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1. It says, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. You see, Isaiah understood. Isaiah had this understanding. He understood that he had a vision of created purpose. And it wasn't it wasn't something that he decided. No. He understood that it was the Father and our Messiah, the Father and the Son, who created us with a created purpose, with a vision of created purpose. Let's go back to the book of Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah and let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29 and let's read verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 and let's read verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. What is that expected end that he is speaking of? It's not as simple as go to heaven. No, he has an expectation because he created us with a vision of created purpose. Are you understanding me? Let's go to John chapter 15 and let's read verse 16. That's John chapter 15, verse 16. It says, and this is the Messiah, he says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Are you understanding are you understanding that he knew us before we knew ourselves? Now, let's go back to the book of Isaiah. And let's go to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7. But I want you to think about the fact that you just read Jeremiah 1 verse 5. And then you read in the book of Remembrance about how much joy the Father gets in creating us. Now let's read Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 7. It says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. 
Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Do you see that? I have created him for my glory, for my joy. Do you see that? The father was bursting forth with joy and love and happiness at the creation of each and every last one of us. And you know, that's something to think about when you walk up to somebody who you don't like for whatever reason. You might not like them, but at their creation, they were loved by the father for a reason. Now, we understand that we were created. We were created with a purpose before the face of the Father. But now you have to ask yourself a question. And that question is, have we, have we started to walk in the vision that the Father has for us? Let's go get some tough love right quick. We're going to get some tough love. Let's go into the stick of Ephraim. We're going to go into the stick of Ephraim and we're going to go to Alma chapter 5 for some tough love. Alma chapter 5. And to start off, let's read verses 14 through 19. Alma chapter 5, verses 14 through 19. It says, and now behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your countenances? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Do ye exercise faith in the redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith and view this mortal body raised in immortality and this corruption raised in incorruption to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in the mortal body? I say unto you, can you imagine yourselves that ye hear the voice of the Lord saying unto you in that day, come unto me, ye blessed for behold. Your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth. Or do you imagine to yourselves that ye can lie unto the Lord in that day and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth and that he will save you. Or otherwise, can ye imagine yourselves brought before the tribunal of God? with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt, yea, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness, yea, a remembrance that ye have set at defiance the commandments of God. I say unto you, can ye look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands? I say unto you, can you look up having the image of God engraven upon your countenances. Now drop down, drop down to verse, drop down to verse 28. And let's read verses 28 through 33. It says, Behold, are ye stripped of pride? I say unto you, if ye are not, ye are not prepared to meet God. Behold, ye must prepare quickly, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand, and such an one have not eternal life. Behold, I say, is there one among you who is not stripped of envy? I say unto you, that such an one is not prepared, and I would that he should prepare quickly, for the hour is close at hand, and he knoweth not when the time shall come, and such an one is not found guiltless. And again I say unto you, Is there one among you 
that doth make a mock of his brother, or that heapeth upon him persecutions. Woe unto such a one, for he is not prepared, and that time is at hand, that he must repent, or he cannot be saved. Yea, even woe unto all ye workers of iniquity. Repent, repent, for the Lord God hath spoken it. Behold, he sendeth an invitation unto all men, for the arms of mercy are extended towards them. And he saith, Repent, and I will receive you. So Alma is not calling out your sins to try and make you feel bad. Quite to the contrary, he loves you and he's having compassion on you, just like the Messiah would have compassion on you. Because it's not just about you just living your life and scarcely trying to make it in. Because what are you doing to bring the Father joy? Are you understanding me? In what way are you helping the Father and his Son? You see, we were all created with a purpose. We were all created with a vision of created purpose. And when we stand before him, do you know what a beautiful thing it will be to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you have completed your vision. You have walked in the vision that I had for you at the beginning in Elda. So when you hear, let us make man in our image, what you need to think is, let us make man with the visions that we have for them. Let us make man with a purpose. Now, family, let me tell y'all about something else that is going on right now. As you all know, it is the month of June right now. And we're going to be careful with our words because we know that there are haters out there that would love to flag the video and get the video taken down. So we're going to be careful with the way we phrase things. But we know that in the month of June, the world goes absolutely crazy. They go absolutely nuts and they call it Pride Month. That within itself is just totally, totally ridiculous. They want to lift up the very sin that the devil was working with. But anyway, <clears throat> so they call this Pride Month. And we all know that we deal with this foolishness. We, we deal with it all year long. It ain't just about one month. We literally deal with it all, all year, every month, almost every day. We go out and we have to see things that we don't want our children to see. We have to sometimes engage with places and people that we don't want to engage with. And we have long known, we have known for a long time that this is an attack against the family. This is an attack against the sanctity of marriage. And we talked a little bit about marriage earlier and how marriage between a man and a woman protects our visions. But did you know, did you know that this is a direct attack against our visions of created purpose? Because the devil doesn't want any of us to 
walk in our visions of created purpose. Oh no, he wants us to walk in all of the false visions. He wants us to say, hey, I want to grow up and be a porn star because it looks like they have all the fun. He wants us to say, hey, I want to grow up and sell drugs because drug dealers make all the money. He wants us to say, hey, I want to go out to Hollywood and make it big. Not knowing, of course, that Hollywood is just a big trap where you go out and you make compromising decisions to advance your career and then you end up in a horrible, horrible pit. You see, he puts before us all of these choices and this, this thought that I can be whatever I want to be when I grow up. And you think that there's all these options open to you not knowing that it's really a trap because all those options distract you from your created purpose. So with that being said, let's go to, let's go to the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai. The book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai. And let's go to Bedal chapter 12 and let's read verse 119 that's Bidal chapter 12 and we're going to read verse 119 all right Bidal chapter 12 verse 119 it says and all of the people of Maim must be careful to avoid all of the corruptions of the wicked, and they must abhor the pollutions of Helea. For, for for every man there is his rib in rich affection, male and female, and romantic affection shown man to man or woman to woman arises from parents showing callous disregard for tenderness, and they act with severity in their behavior towards children. And such affection is not a part of any vision of created purpose that dwells in the heart of my father. And all of the Urkadeshi will act with great remorse before the face of such pollutions. And their created nature will cause them to shrink away from supporting any such among the children of men. Are y'all hearing me? The holy watchers see this wicked, wicked activity in this so-called time of pride. And they shrink back from it. When your children have had all these visions before them and they think it's okay to live that kind of life. They think, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just know that I can still have a relationship with God and I can still do this and I can still do that. Let me tell you something. It is a trick of the adversary because it causes the holy angels to shrink away from them. And in doing so, then they never, they never get to walk in their created purpose because those things are foreign to them. They're alien to them. You understand? So when normally creation would have reached out to you to let you know what your created purpose is. It would have been written in the clouds. It would have been heard in the wind or upon the waves. Are you understanding me? You would have felt it 
emanating from the very rocks. Understand that creation ministers to us. But when you're dealing with that type of wickedness, when you're dealing with that type of romantic affection, they shrink back from you. Are you understanding me? This is an attack, an attack against our families. This is an attack against our marriages. This is an attack against our children. This is an attack against our power. Are you hearing me? This is an attack against our nation. This is an attack against the righteous. And to anyone who is listening to this message, and you may be thinking to yourself, oh, that's hate speech. You're wrong about that because this is love speech. Because let me tell you something. You were created before the face of the Father with the Messiah pleading for you, saying, create this person because they can do this, this, and this. And it brought our Father so much happiness to create you. So it's not hate speech. This is love speech. This is compassion speech because we love you. We love you and we want you to walk in your created purpose. We want you to walk in the vision of your created purpose. And let me tell you, if you decide, if you decide that you want to give up that lifestyle, if you decide that you want to walk in the vision of your created purpose, that you want to find out what it is and that you want to actually please the Father in this way, then let me tell you, it is not, it is not going to be all roses. You are going to be tempted. As a matter of fact, let's, let's read something. I wasn't going here, but let's go here. Let's go, let's go into the Apocrypha. Let's go into Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. We're going to go into Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 2. And let's just read uh, the first probably 9 or 10 verses. Let's see. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 or Sirach chapter 2. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. Family, I hope y'all were edified today. Thank you. Rawak Kadash.
All praises to a higher Kased. All praises to a Noki said. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Matsa the Lamb. This is little son Sabal saying much love, much respect, and much shalom.